Good morning, folks. We'll begin by taking a look at the last day of our quiet sun in 171 angstroms, and then the red one, 304. Remember, folks, we have a major announcement coming this week. The most important project the observers have ever undertaken will move into the public realm over the coming year, and as many of you had hoped for over the last two years, Dr. Kong Pop and I are now teaming up for the second time to bring our disaster prediction models together into one place. Not for the government or some academic journal, but for you guys, for everyone. Come back tomorrow for the details. Let's head over to spaceweathernews.com, and as I said, we've got a calm star, so we're eyeing two plasma filaments snaking over the southeastern limb there. They'll pose a moderate eruption threat if they hold on another two days and face Earth. The solar flaring has definitely hit a ceiling, and dejectedly begins to decline as we expect sunspot numbers to bottom out as well as that group on the right turns away, leaving only that one lone umbra on the disk. Let's look at the solar wind so we can analyze the CME impact. As we said yesterday morning, the 15th, middle of the graph up in blue, the phi angle shift is the interplanetary shockwave impact. Density was moderate to high, but speed never climbed out of medium range. And the shockwave was slow moving in arrival, so its effects were not major. KP of 4 held instability globally for a few hours. A few localized disruptions of greater magnitude did exist, however, as Karuna shows on its K and Q index, we did have some level 2 and 3 localized events. We expect a more significant earthquake uptick when the northern dark patch creeps over the left side and begins to face Earth. Even still, as we wait, the southern corona hole continues to face Earth and keeps the earthquake watch index up off the floor. We have now had two concerning earthquakes in New Zealand in about two and a half days. We really need to hope there's nothing bigger coming. Four great articles today, first one out of NASA's Earth Observatory showing how the heat blob in the Northeast Pacific has disappeared. Good article on its effects on biodiversity, couple climate notes as well. Next, yet another reason that historical use of sunspot number only to gauge solar activity leaves you with a very incomplete model. Now we have discussed x-ray, EUV, and particle variability, but here's some reasons why things like faculi and spicules are also incredibly underappreciated in their effects on Earth. Big names on that publication. Next, we've got one for the new Electric Universe proponents. If you remember anything about Victor Schauberger's levitation to lead Skalnin's coral or other concepts about gravity being an electric force, it turns out that an incredible amount of leeway was used in the LIGO gravitational wave analysis to make the numbers all work out, which, above all else, leaves us with a different idea about what might be causing gravity. Last but not least, a diligent literature review of all published material has found an incredible agreement regarding organic versus conventional meat and dairy products. The facts are not 100% in favor of organic, but at worst, we're talking about 80-20 in favor of the natural way. Solid read. Remember, all newcomers should watch every video on the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. You'll get caught up with a quarter million enthusiasts in no time flat. Take advantage of that material, folks. It's made to teach you to fish, not give you a fish if you catch my drift. We've got pressure and radar through the next 12 hours, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.